Yes, yes, what's going on? Welcome to the podcast where we talk all things property, creative cash flow, and of course, how to be financially independent today, not in 25 years. And we've got a special guest in the house, literally, today. Um, I've just literally driven from Derby A38, M42, past the ball ring, through Birmingham city centre. We're about two, three miles out of the city centre in this five bedroom, huge SA. And we've got a special guest. I'm super, super excited. It's the first ever video podcast we're trying. So make sure you let me know your thoughts. Always appreciated. And without further ado, welcome, Ed. What's going on? Boom. Yeah. Nice. Happy. Good. Nice to be here. Nice to see you. Good. Yeah. I'm excited, man. Good. So it's the first time we're meeting. Yeah. Uh, but we were just having a little chat and we, we feel like you know, it was about a year ago when we first started talking, right? Yeah, I think I think to the week, mate. So yeah, Sit, a lot, yeah, a lot's changed since then for mm. you, I know. So we're going to get into that, but yeah, I mean, let's just start with a little intro into Ed, you know, and you know when you decided you wanted to get into property. Yeah, so I think I was pretty much chasing everything, you know, and just really stuck in a run. The one thing that was that was certain is I didn't want to be stuck in a in a job working for my money and. Uh, thinking about my time going forward basically so sure. I was tr trying a lot throwing myself into here there and everywhere e-commerce all that and um but one thing I knew for sure was probably no matter how or if I made the money it'd end up in property in somewhat mm, mm. so I started having a look tinkering and then realized that there's all these mad strategies that mm. people are absolutely donning out there and I was just like Christ you can actually get in like entry level so mm. um I thought let's see what this is about and I did probably like a year and a half, 18 months of solid, intense, obsessive research, you know, YouTube reading, it got me reading, I don't read books. Um, and then uh, and then eventually I was like, right, I need to make the call cool and rang up you to see if it was real. <laughs> sure. No, I remember it well. And to be fair, you you always had a purpose in you, even even those times there. So so when we first started talking, you've been looking into for a year or 18 months or so. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, sick. And then, yeah, we had a chat. Obviously, you became a mentee of mine. Um, let's fast forward a year on now. Obviously, you were just starting. You had no units. Where, where are you at now? Uh, 12 units that I lease, if you like, and um, picked up two for management yesterday. Sick. So 12, 14 units and a couple in the pipeline. Well, congrats, mate. Thank you. Epic. Thank you. Um, yeah. Revenue, cash flow? Um, so this month, what we're on the 26th, or pretty much most of the way through the month, brought in revenue 17.5k and probably about 5k cash flow. Massive. Absolutely massive in a year. So congrats. Guys, it's real. You can see man's doing it. <laughs> a lot of people are like, hang on a minute though, Simon, it's all right for you. You're already well established and you've already da 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 da. Don't chat to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ed, so obviously we want to unpack that. Um, and I guess, I guess what we're thinking is, I know you've acquired a lot of units in the last few months. Mm. We're in January, February now. So I'm guessing you're expecting these deals to go through the roof come... April, May. Yeah, exactly that. You know, I feel like these months I've just been putting in the work, setting it up, probably very happy to break even. Yeah. Um, you know, a bonus that I'm cash flowing pretty good, which is fantastic, but my prices are low and c competitive as hell. Yeah. You know, how the seasons roll. So, um, but especially with Commonwealth Games here in Birmingham mm. and I think most of my units tend to have quite a big summer upswing as it is. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm hoping it's going to be a good a good summer and a good year. Sick, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. So <clears throat> I guess the viewers are going to want to know, like, how? Like, how how have you managed to, to do it? Yeah, I mean, so it's complicated. People always say to me, you know, at the moment, do you, how do you do it? Are you, are you to agent? Are you DTV? Are mm. you, do you pay for your deals? And the answer is I do all three. Like I was saying before on camera, wasn't we? If the um if the deal stacks for me, then the deal stacks. You know, I'm mm. happy to pay a sourcer their cut. Often I don't think they do stack with a three K fee. Um I went rabid phoning up pestering agents non stop and in the background I'm still got my email 
alert notifications on and send out a, a scripted message to, to landlords, you know, when I can, if I see a property that fits. The thing is now I'm a bit more pickier and choosier when before mm. I was just like, just give me anything just to get my foot in the door, really. Yeah. So, yeah, a bit of everything. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, I'll, I'll get a bit more info out of you in a oh. bit. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so in terms of these 12 deals, you mentioned you're venturing into management now. Um, they're all essays. Yeah, they're all essays. And do you just want to tell us where they're based? Because they're not actually all in one location. No. So I've got, if we go north down, one in Liverpool that's mine, two under management as of yesterday in Liverpool. Yeah. Um, five here in Birmingham and six in Somerset. And that's where you're based, right? That's where I'm based, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So why, why have you expanded outside of Somerset? So, I mean... <laughs> I was just wanting and hungry to take on deals and obviously I'm I'm not too far from Birmingham where I grew up, you know, and yes. family's here, so that is always an attractive option as to I don't think I'll be in Somerset my whole life, you know. Yeah. It's it's very much a temporary measure. Um so wanting to bring the operation where I might see closer to home is nice. something that I've tended to focus on a bit more. And also in the early days, like I said, I was try. I was going through a lot. So my the one up in Liverpool, my best deal was my second deal, and even though it was afar, like you know, talking like a five, six, mm. five hour journey, the numbers were just unreal. I was like, how can I, how can I leave this if mm. I can make this work? And I was like, I'm sure I can make this work. I was just running it through my head, and um, and it's worked. It's worked fantastic. So. I was just a lot more aggressive mm. chasing the returns because I knew it would help me scale faster. So for that, I had to look had to look further afield as well. Sure, a hundred percent. So, <clears throat> I mean, it was funny as you say that because I remember my first deal. <clears throat> I'd done a deal, and then it was about six weeks. Like nothing, like nothing was sticking. I was <laughs> like, I didn't, damn, like, everyone said your first deal, your worst deal. My first deal was probably one of my best deals and then it was just like super hard to top it and in the end I pretty I've pretty much stayed in quite a similar area really but my first deal was rent to HMO and my second deal was rent to SA and that's when like a light bulb moment I was like hang on a minute so now I can do anything above two beds say eh? and I can do the HMOs and all of a sudden the whole market's open do you want to get into some of the HMO stuff? I mean, originally that was definitely what I thought would be the case. You know, I I liked the option. I work as well, obviously, full time. So mm. I liked knowing that it, HMO would probably be a bit more passive in terms yeah. of the ongoing management and, and whatnot. So that was kind of what I thought I'd end up getting into. But seeing the returns on SA mm. and, like you said, the more flexibility in terms of bedroom, mm. I just... I feel like it's my calling, man. I'm just all about the SA game now. Really? I mean, people, yeah, obviously people are quite happy with rent to HMOs for what, 570 cash flow, mm. you know, and I'm trying to take on a deal that's going to, yeah, double that. So obviously you've got, you know, you've got your 10, 12 SA units. Um, yeah, because I'm thinking back to my first deal. Like I had my first deal, is actually a rent to HMO. My second deal was a rent to SA and then it was like a light bulb moment. I was like, oh, okay, so now I can do all of these different deals are you looking to maybe get into HMO so I'm not looking out right if I come across a deal that stacks and mm. and then as a HMO it would be appealing then then absolutely I wouldn't say no to it I'm open to it. any deal that stacks I just haven't come across any that are right for me really mm. and and the ones that I have I'm I, th I find I'm better off putting a, a um, SA edge on it anyhow yeah um, but initially I felt the same as you. Mm. I was looking for rent HMOs because, you know, I work full time. So the, um, prospect of it being a lot more passive mm. was very appealing. And, um, I thought at that time, it, well, it's easy to scale up as well. So that was what I went for. And then I just like, like exactly what you just said, like you've, there's a whole nother market, the two beds, the three beds, mm. You know the four beds; they have a whole other purpose with SA. So, sure, and it's an interesting one because, like you say, the cash flow in SA is nice. 
I was actually going through my accounts. When was it? I think it was around New Year. Like I always just like to have a bit of a reminisce, you know, a couple of glasses of wine with a wife, whatever, start having a look at the... For some reason, we got up the bank account and looked at the very first transactions <laughs> and like how the account grew or didn't grow, <laughs> like whatever. And it was really quite fascinating to see that it, the initial sort of recurring HMO income was good, but then all of a sudden I was getting like lumps. And in fairness, sorry guys, but in fairness, some of those lumps did really make a huge difference in terms of the scalability. And then the other thing that was just a game changer for me was, is it look? I don't know. But basically, I remember it was my first, it was my first year and I had Chinese students hit me up on spare room saying we need a property. Um, coming from China, studying in the UK, cool. So I ended up getting them in one property. Next thing I know, I get another message uh, on WhatsApp. Hi there, my friend is like a plus six one seven number or whatever. Hi, my friend said you're the guy for the houses in Derby, like it all in broken English because they'd obviously use yeah, like Google translator. translator. <laughs> so anyway, my phone was ringing off. Next thing I know, I could I think I did four houses, four HMO houses for these Chinese students that were paying a premium, and I never forget. One of them said to me when they arrived, they said, "Do you mind if we pay cash?" And I was like. Oh, oh yeah yeah cool fine there was like the whole year so literally that was 500 it was probably 500 quid times let's say well 12 so it was six grand four students per house so it was like what was it like it was it was about 20 odd grand and then their friend said oh can we also pay cash in advance <laughs> Another well, they, they, grand. They, they paid for the year up front. The year up front, cash no. pro. <laughs> no, they did not. I swear, and I, I never ever forget, like me and Lucy, we, we, <laughs> we went down. Like, keep in mind, I was probably like four or five deals in. And I went down to the houses, and like they all came out once a time with 50 pound notes. And, it, and literally, I was in this house, and it was just like bare Selfridges bags, like just mad. They're just boiling, bro, like differently. Anyway. So it's like counting out like five grand, five grand, five grand, five grand. And I was like, walk to the car, like 20 grand. I'm like, Think you get what the hell? Sure. Like, <laughs> I literally just had three grand. Now I've got like, tw anyway, so I went into the bank, um, caused the right scene. Cause it was like, you know, <laughs> you, know you, you had to do it on the cash point and you like putting the money in and then it goes in and then somebody had to come and assist me or like putting like 30, 40 grand in the bank or whatever. Um, yes, I did pay tax. I did put it in the um, the, the bank account, but um, but yeah, that was just massive because that allowed me then to a scale and then fast track the process. So, yeah. yeah. So HMO can be good. Um, that's not the norm, though, is it? No, nah. that's some uh, Simon, you next lucky, level stuff. You lucky git. Um, but yeah, yeah. You, you know, you must have been created a product and a, and a vibe. You know, you got to capitalise on the situation, didn't you? Like, trust me, and take and bro, that's just a start. Like, look what you've done with that now. So, mm. trust me. And I think for me, what I really like, I do like the student HMO model because you don't pay council tax yeah. and they're in for a year. Like the room by room thing can be a bit of a a ball ache at times, uh, but when you get a group of students in no council tax, you know that there's a grand a month coming. It is nice. Um, but yeah, in terms of scaling, right now the main focus is SA. Um, and you've also just taken on these two for management. So what, what's the thinking behind that? To be honest with you, it's a bit of a, not a tricky one, but um, you know they've seen that I, my unit in Liverpool is doing very well, following me on Instagram, and got stuck. It's two different guys but with the same agent, mm. uh, an awful agent. Um, so they've just said, what are you, what, what are you kind of bringing in on your unit? And we had a bit of a chat and our units were very similar. Mine was outperforming it, you know, by incredible amounts. And I said, so let me take a look at it. Like, and it was just marketed horrifically. The communication was non-existent between the, between the agent and, and the person. And um, they were both pretty distressed. And I was like, well, I, I've never done management. I haven't even 
thought about getting into it and they were like, can you help us? What can you do to help us? I was like, it's, it was so bad the way they had been treated and um, that they were paying money and they were owed money and mm. just didn't know where they stood with anything. I said, well, I've got, I've got you know, a team up there with only one unit ready to take on units. If we could work something out, then I'd be more than happy to help. And that's kind of, that's how it started really. And that's literally what happened as of yesterday. I went up and just um, scoped out the units because they didn't even know what their units looked like. Mm. Some of them, had, one hadn't been listed in four months. Mm. Four months I'd been listed. Mental. Crazy. So, um, yeah, that's how it started. And like I said, obviously very fresh. I picked up the keys yesterday, so. Perfect. How are you, how are you managing properties like six hours away from you? Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> it, it's, it's mad, like. Uh, people are often baffled. And a lot of people don't even believe me, like, mm. say how many units and where I'm doing them from. I think it's all about um, the systems in place. Like, and obviously, I try and deter anything from happening in the first place and then mm. make sure if anything does happen that I'm able to deal with it efficiently, effectively and, uh, and and whatnot. But a lot of that is due to like the the housekeepers that I have, you know, they play a big part. Mm. And when I ever go and like try and recruit, I make a big deal of calling them housekeepers and the additional tasks that I would like them to complete if they're happy with, you know, mm. instead of just cleaners mm. who I'm not going to hear off and, you know, and just that so a lot of it is due to that other, other, a lot of it is due to deterrent as well you know just if I see a potential bad guest that might be a problem I'm just not going to have it like because I can't be doing with the travel if anything goes wrong um, another big plus which is a big point in the argument for D to V or agent for me is a couple of things that have gone wrong up in Liverpool I've had the agent sort it straight away nice so that is um, something that's very handy and I've always got a backlog of or special notebook ready for people who I might need on hand straight away if I need and I haven't needed to so yeah it's just all about it sounds lame and not lame but cliche it's just all about systems mm. it's all about systems um, how much time have you had to spend up there? I was up there for a weekend on my brother's graduation set up the unit and never been back since. Perfect. I, you know, I went back to Liverpool yesterday. Um, I didn't even visit that unit. I just went to pick up the, the two new keys, the two new units yesterday and that's it. So. Sick. And how did you recruit your housekeepers up there? So I, that specific one was on uh, for online forums, you know, whether that be through Facebook groups or Bark, I think, and like Turnover B&B. Yeah. And then just inviting them, you know, at the same time I was setting them up, I'd speak to them on the phone. You know, you get inundated with calls and people, a lot of time wasters, all that. Probably had like, I think I fine-combed fine fine combed it to three people, three potential candidates. So I just said, well, I'm setting up the unit. Come and have a look at it on, on, the, on, the, on the Sunday. Should be getting ready. <laughs> and have a look around, see what you think, and we'll have a chat. And um, that's literally how, like, she was, we just vibed, like, is I wanted to build, I wanted, I want to, and like building close relationships with, with my housekeepers and my, mm. my cleaners, just in case anything goes wrong. And they're more invested as well, you know, they're not just cleaning it and getting off to the next job. They're on the journey with me and are like, um, they want me to do well, mm. you know, mm. and we look after each other and, it, and, it, and it's, it's paying dividends. Sick. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I mean, we could just talk yeah. all day, literally. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this deal that we're in now, especially for people watching on the video. We're in one of Ed's um, property deals. Do you just want to talk us through this one? Yeah, so numbers-wise or what it is? Yeah, what it is and numbers, if you have any. Yeah. Um, so this is obviously a five-bed SA just outside of... Birmingham City Centre, I'd say just outside, probably 10, 15 minutes to the centre. Yeah. But um, a lot of the reason why I like these larger size properties tends to be less competition. Yeah. And um, for contractors, they're very ideal. There's abundance of parking. You yeah. don't get that in the city centre. Mm. And quite easy to get in and out of this place as well. Um, it's been newly refurbished, though, like with most of these properties I come across, Corners have been cut on mm. the trades, but mm. 
it's definitely it's definitely a nice well you can see can't you yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice wicked. place it's wicked it's a nice place um it costs me 1350 a month i paid a saucer for this um 750 quid and i've had it 3 months it's weathered the winter months um pretty well and like i said with most of my portfolio i think there's going to be a big upswing the upswing on this unit, I think, could be Mental. probably one of the drastic ones, mm. yeah. Just because of when things start getting competitive and people start coming, the amount of bodies you can get in and it sleep quite practically as well, will, um, you know, see a big uplift on the nightly rate and I'm looking forward to that. And Commonwealth Games should be through the roof, so... Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, if you've got, what, like, even if you had five sub is with like a 30 40 quid per night per head budget it's like your 150 quid a night that's four and a half grand a month right yeah exactly. basically that's where it's going in it there's, there's seven beds upstairs you know and they're nice nice rooms so sick it's good yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna have to have a look i've not, not been up there yet so okay cool so you've done that and i think you made some really good points i mean this isn't um in terms of the area and stuff like the house is very sort of unassuming from the outside a lot of people, when they think SA, they think it needs to be these sexy, swanky apartments and this, that and the other. And my experience has kind of been the opposite, really. Um, the, the cash cows are properties like this. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's just knowing your, who your tenant, tenant profile and mm. target, target audience is in terms of guests, isn't it? Mm. You know, what, what do they require? What are they going to need? The high, swanky... Um, units are probably leisure stays, aren't they? Mm. In the cent, the right need to be in the right in the centre of town. Mm. You know, and there's plenty of avenues which you can take your units, but knowing what is going to do well, you need to know what's in the area and what's what's happening. You know. Yeah, and I I don't know if you found this, but when I'm getting long term contractors in, like they they don't really bother you. No, <laughs> it's crack on. They can change a light switch. They can sort out a slight issue. So. It's hands off. Like everyone thinks, oh, SA is going to be a lot more management and maintenance than HMO, but sometimes it's actually not the case. Yeah, yeah, and I think on a not a side note, just rolling with that point, one eye-opening thing for me, which has been such a, a bit of an epiphany, really, and the way I can angle things is, I can't believe the um, the my my properties in SA maintain their state. Yes. You know, and I would have thought it'd be the opposite because you think people are going to be in there, they're here for two nights, kicking stuff over, mm. you know, having a party. You're like, stuff's going to get damaged, but it's the opposite. Like, I've got my cleaners um, in here constantly maintaining things, cleaning things. People are probably not really in the house much. They're out. Mm. And then where you see the HMOs that are very much lived in, mm. they, they deteriorate quite quickly. And that's one thing that I never really... I thought about at the start, but wasn't it was one thing that I was wrong about. I was completely wrong about, mm. and the standard of the the standard of and the condition of the unit tends to re retain quite well. Yeah, one hundred percent. But yeah, and then the contractors they're very self sufficient. You know, you know what they're here for. They're here, they they're down and moving out to work. As long as your place is a nice place to stay and get some food, then they're happy. One hundred percent. Okay, cool. So just sort of winding down a little bit then. So obviously. You know, it's going to be a massive year for you. This is only year two. What, like, where, what's next? Like, are, are you consider? He's not going to quit his job, but I'm just saying, that <laughs> if he's making twenty grand a month, it could be a bit tough. Uh, like, what, what are your plans moving forward? Yeah, so that's um, tough for me, and I will keep my job for as long as I can. So each time. <laughs> I start scaling up a bit more to the next evolution, you know, like two to one, two, three units was like, oh, doing bits bit by bit, three to five was systems, five to 10, like a bit more systems, 10 plus, I'm now looking at systems like yeah. in a big way because I have a good job, I enjoy my job um, and I don't necessarily want to leave it unless I have to, mm. but um, obviously, knowing the ambition and the dream, um, if things carry on the way they're going, um, then that is inevitable when I'm not sure. Mm. Like I said, I just, each time I'm just trying to improve on the systems and yeah. relieve my, relieve my time instead of thinking 
sack the job off and, 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 and free up your time that way. So it's hard for me to know what's happening, what's going to happen within the next year. You know, it took me six months, seven months to get my first, six months to get my first deal, I think. Mm. And then in the past, um, it took me maybe five months, past seven, eight months, in the past two months, you know, I had, I only had five units probably two months ago. Mm. And now I'm on 12, 14. Um, things are very hard to predict. They're changing week in, week out. Um, one thing I know is that if I feel stagnant for two weekends in a row and I'm not, I haven't got a unit coming up, then I start <laughs> flipping, twitching out. Like I start thinking, oh, I'm gonna start paying these sources soon, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> so um, you know, I'm just continually wanting to grow, doing it effectively and efficiently as possible, and that's the goal. Um, and and then to follow your footsteps, you know, a big reason why I came to you is not because you are smashing it, but your the route you've taken is something I can really relate to and drive and strive towards um mm. you know you're creating cash flow with the goal well not even the goal you're doing it implementing into um reinvesting into assets and you're doing that in a very sustainable and efficient way as well mm. with brrs um and that's exactly what i want to do as well mate so i'm just but my mom's always like why well, are you you got 15k 17k this month that's enough for a deposit up north. Like, go and get one now. <laughs> My mum, it doesn't work like that. You know, mm. It's cash flow. Mm. It's all being recycled. So then when I start making, you know, 10, 15K actual profit instead mm. of revenue a mm. month, then I can look at buying houses. I don't want to just buy one, soak up everything and have yeah. to wait a while again. Yeah. You know, I, want it, I want a cash flow ticking over. Big. So at the moment, yeah, I'm still scaling up. So big cash flow, more units. Hopefully get some BRRs coming. Maybe you know you might you might be able to get your first BR in the next say twelve months. Is that a goal? I think should, so. Yeah. Put it out there. Should we set in my goal? Yeah, one then. I'm sure that I'm sure that's possible. Obviously, look after Mumsy. Keep keep Mumsy. Always, happy. man. But yeah, man, keep doing what you're doing, man. I'm super super gassed up and proud of of what you're doing. Uh, we'll definitely have to do this again to catch up. And um, yeah, or everybody listening or watching, make sure you subscribe if you like content like this, if you like the podcast, if you like the YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Oh, there's a postman outside. That's why I was like, hang on a minute. What the hell's that noise? Postman here. Bloody hell. Subscribe to the we channel. We are in the house. <laughs> this is real shit. Um, yeah, guys, thank you very much for joining. Um, I'll put uh, Ed's socials in the description of the both bits. You can go check him out. His Instagram's absolutely, absolutely sick, giving a lot of value out there. And whatever you do, don't wait 25 years, get creative. Boom. Sick. Yeah? Absolutely sick. Good. <laughs>